If you're looking to start your YouTube journey and you're not sure exactly where you should start, or if you're looking to revamp your channel, you're trying to find some secrets and some tips to help you strategize so that you're successful here on the platform, today's video is for you. I want to give you 19 tips to help you become successful on your YouTube channel. Hi, I'm Sharina Nicole, and today we're going to be talking about 19 tips that I think will help you on your YouTube journey. Now, before we get started, I am going to let you guys know I do have all of these tips outlined in a detailed blog post if you guys want to kind of go through every tip step by step and you want to get a little bit more detail about each tip i will leave that blog post link in the video description if you guys want to check that out let's jump into all 19 tips that i want to share with you guys today the first tip i'm going to share with you guys is to create a channel mission statement so we start our channel we know that we want to create content but we don't really know why we want to create the content it may be because you're interested in that topic or it may just be that you want to be a content creator and you want to share your gifts and your tips with the world right but it's really good to have a mission statement so that you can keep this at the forefront of your mind when you're creating that content because as you guys know when you sit down to create a video the lights are on the camera is on you kind of figure out what exactly am i doing this for not sure your mission statement helps you to keep your personal brand and your content aligned so that everything that you're doing is helping to get you to your goal and your mission statement helps you to identify what that goal is who your audience is and why you're creating the content i wish i would have done that sooner i just turned on the camera and started recording and i had no idea why i was recording or who i was recording for so having your mission statement just really helps you to keep that at the forefront and keep you aligned with why you're doing what you're doing tip number two is figuring out your niche and sticking to it at least for a short while so a niche is basically a specialized segment within a market basically what that means is if youtube in general is a marketplace so with the example of a market think about the grocery store if you are in a grocery store what section of the grocery store would you be in would you be in the produce section would you be in the frozen food section would you be in the dairy section how about the deli market right there is a specialized segment within the market that you need to have your content fit in in order for YouTube to push your video to your potential audience and for your audience to find you. It's easier for you to grow on YouTube when you find out where you place within that marketplace and I really find that you get better success in terms of growing your audience and growing your viewership when you fit within the niche. Tip number three is to choose your channel name and make sure that it is memorable. So here my channel of course is Shimmer Nicole so when you see my face you can associate my face with my actual name. If you see me on any other social media platform you can associate my YouTube channel with my actual name. So for me that helps to build my personal brand and of course it helps you to put a name to the face. But for you guys, if you are, for instance, starting a channel and it may be Rob's Auto Repair, every time they see your videos, they're going to think, oh, you know what? Um, something's happening to my car. I remember that guy Rob from YouTube. He does auto repairs. It helps your audience be able to associate your content with your name and with your channel. So if you can make it a memorable channel, when someone has an issue and they're trying to solve it, they're going to automatically think about your channel name and associate that with your content. So make sure that your content and your channel name align so that it is memorable for your audience. Tip number four is to create a schedule. When I say schedule, that means to create a schedule for when you're going to film your content, make a schedule for when you're going to edit and upload your content, and make sure that your schedule is known to your audience. It really makes it easy for you to grow and for people to be familiar with you and really connect with your content when they know when you're going to post it. So for me, um, it's really easy for me to have Sunday as my upload day. That's the day that I can schedule my content to go live at a particular time. And my audience, you guys, will know that on Sundays around 11 o'clock, I'm going to have new exciting content coming out and so they can associate Sundays with the day to watch my channel. It really helps you to stay on track as a content creator because you know Again, for example, my content, I know on Sundays is going to go live, so I know I have from Sunday to Sunday to get my content filmed, edited, and scheduled so that my audience can see it. And don't forget that we have here on YouTube, we have the community tab on your homepage where you can 
update your audience on any changes any new videos and of course if you decide to change your upload schedule you would definitely want to put it in your community tab as well as in your video description so that your audience knows when your content is now going to be uploaded and live Tip number five is something that um, you don't have to necessarily learn it right now, but I think it's really effective when growing your channel and building an audience, and that is using brand colors in your thumbnail and your thumbnail designs. It's really great to keep your thumbnail design kind of cohesive so that, again, your audience can automatically remember, oh, I know for a fact that that is Shamir Nicole's thumbnail design because she always uses pink or I know that that's Shamir's thumbnails because she always uses that bold font. Every time you see Nike you are familiar with it because of the logo design. You know the little check mark. Think of your channel the same way. Make it so that your thumbnails are recognizable to your audience. That is something I wish I would have known a little bit sooner and even now I sometimes I play with my thumbnail designs but if you can keep your thumbnail designs kind of cohesive it really helps with brand recognition and also for you to find the audience that you're looking for. Tip number six goes without saying, but it, again, it is something that I wish I would have done when I started my YouTube channel so many years ago. It's actually research the videos and the titles that I want to upload. I started my channel by doing hair tutorials and whatever hairstyle I wanted to do that day, I would just do it and I wouldn't even think about how I was going to title the video. I didn't think about the words, keywords that I wanted to use in the title. I would just upload it and it'd be like hair curling tutorial or something like that. <laughs> I didn't research anything and the way that you do your research, an easy way to do your research is to actually use the YouTube search bar. So let's say I want to create a video about YouTube tips I wish I would have known sooner. <laughs> I would go to the YouTube home bar and I would search in YouTube tips and then I will let it auto populate. Basically what that means is I'm going to see what people are searching as it relates to YouTube tips. That is going to help me identify not only what my audience or my potential audience is looking for, it's also going to help me find the keywords that I need to use in my titles, in my video descriptions. That is how you do really quick YouTube research to know what you need to title your videos, what you need to put in your video descriptions, and so much more. But I wish I would have learned to do this a little bit sooner because it would have helped me to create a a strategy for the types of videos that I want to put on my channel as well as know what my audience is looking for. Tip number seven goes with tip number six but using really descriptive video descriptions right. The video description is right underneath your video and it helps you to tell your audience what the video is about, what they're going to learn from this video, and any pertinent information for your video. Now I know that it kind of again goes without saying but those keywords that I just talked about that you would use for your video titles as well as for your video thumbnails, those keywords also go in your video description and this is something that I did not know when I first started my channel. I did not realize how much SEO, which is search engine optimization, goes into your video description. So putting those keywords in your video description will help again for YouTube to know what your video is about and also who would be looking for this type of information. So really be descriptive in your video descriptions and really take time to think about what you're going to write in that video description because that is going to also help in how your audience is going to find you. Tip number eight is something that has been more popular within recent years but it's also using video chapters or video timestamps. This is also something that you also see here on my channel. It's little breakdowns within your video and this is going to help you and your audience be able to identify any pertinent information that they want to find within a video faster. So this helps with your watch time. It also helps people again in your audience be able to find what they're looking for more efficiently and when they're able to find it within your video they're more likely to click on your video because they know that you're going to have the answer and they know they're going to be able to find that answer within your content. So utilizing video chapters and video timestamps are really a great way to grow your audience and to have brand recognition. Tip number nine. Now this is a tip that again is going to be great for anyone who's looking to start that channel and something I probably again wish I would have done sooner is the use of affiliate links in my video description. Now for you all who are trying to get onto YouTube and you're trying to make this a career and you're trying to monetize your channel and I know that you may not be able to be a YouTube partner because you have to have a certain amount of subscribers and watch time 
on your channel you can still be able to earn money and monetize your channel faster with the use of affiliate links and you put that in your video description now I'm going to put my favorite affiliate links and affiliate programs in the video description of my video so that you guys can check those out. But I wish I would have done that sooner because I was so hyper focused on creating content and trying to get into the YouTube partner program that I really didn't utilize affiliate links and affiliate marketing earlier on. And I really passed up on an opportunity for me to make money from my channel before I was in the YouTube partner program. So I would highly recommend that you try to think about and learn about affiliate marketing and also affiliate programs so that you're able to monetize faster. Tip number 10, oh, I really wish I would have done this. It would have saved me so much time in the beginning. But because I've been doing YouTube for a little, for a little while now, I'm a little more proficient in this, but start by writing video scripts and video outlines. I'm telling you, this would have saved me so much time in post-production as well as just having my videos be more efficient and to really flow. And also it helps with your watch time. So writing video scripts is basically a way for you to write out exactly what it is you want to say, all of the information that you really want to make sure you have in your video so that your audience is more engaged. And you are answering the question or you are giving them value within that video and then also it helps when you're editing if you have a outline or video script you already know that all of the information that you need to have in your video is going to be there and you can also kind of trim off the fat in post production but you're able to eliminate a lot of that filler or a lot of the information that you don't need in your video if you write a script tip number 11 again something that i did not utilize starting out but i highly recommend that everyone on youtube do this is to utilize your default video upload options. So this is gonna be in your channel dashboard and it's basically an option for you to be able to have a default of everything that you want to be uploaded in your video every single time. This will include your social media handles. This may include some of your affiliate links or information that you know that your users are going to ask you in every video, especially for content creators. They may always ask in every video, like what camera are you using? What lighting are you using? These are links that you can already have in every single video and have this information for your audience to always find. And I think that this is something that every creator creator on YouTube should have. Make sure you're using these default uploads so that it can save you time. Tip number 12 works in conjunction with tip number 11 and that is to make sure that you utilize your channel tags. Your channel tags are also a way that YouTube can categorize your channel because it lets YouTube know what your channel is about. Also it helps for your audience to find you. So your channel tags are going to talk about those keywords that people are going to use to help find your channel. So remember I talked about the research that you need to do to find your titles and your thumbnails and all of the words that you're going to be using in your video description. You're also going to be using those video keywords in your channel tag. So use some of those keywords so that your audience can find you. And again, these are default channel uploads. So they are always going to be there. You can change them if you decide to change your niche, but it makes it easier for your audience to find you. Tip number 13 is to organize your videos into channel playlists. Now this is really critical for creators just like myself who create different varieties of content. So for me, I have a ton of video playlists for all of the hair tutorials that I did, but then I also have a playlist of vlogs that I've created as well as self-help videos that I have here on those channels. It really helps for the people who are looking for that type of content to have a video library of content that is already there easily accessible for them to view and watch. Especially if you're creating content within various niches you want to have that organized and really available for everybody to find. Oh, now tip number 14, I am so excited to talk to you guys about, and it is to repurpose your content. Now, if you are creating content here on YouTube, this is typically what we call long form content, but you're able to repurpose that content and create 
shorter videos to go on various platforms like YouTube Shorts as well as to share on other social media platforms. So repurpose your content, especially like here on YouTube by taking videos like the one that I'm making today. I can cut up this content and create video shorts. It is a way for other people to potentially find your content, for you to reach out to other audiences, as well as utilize the content that you've already created in another way so that you can grow your channel. This is what we call work smarter, not harder. Tip number 15, also one of my personal favorites and something that I wish I would have done a long time ago is batch your content. What do I mean by that? That means that for my ladies, if you have already taken the time to do your hair, do your makeup, find an outfit, film and batch all of your content in one day. That is what I'm going to be actually doing today. So I am going to be making this video for you guys. And as soon as I'm done filming this video, I'm going to change my shirt, probably change my lipstick color, and I'm going to create another video. I am going to be batching my content and filming all of my content today so that when it's time for me to sit down and edit, I will have more content to edit and have ready and prepare for my YouTube and I don't have to take four or five days to make four or five videos. I'm going to make four or five videos all in one day. Tip number 16 is to use free software, your free apps, your free editing apps right now CapCut is one of the most popular video softwares that you can use you can use it on your phone you can use it on um, a desktop video leap um, anything that comes standard with your computers use the free software so one of my favorite softwares that I'm currently using that is free is Canva I use Canva to edit sometimes YouTube videos to use pop-ups like this one I also use it for my video thumbnails it is so many free software options that you can use and a lot of times when you're starting YouTube you always think oh I don't have money for expensive cameras and stuff like that use your phone Find you some free software. There is no excuse. And I wish I would have done that earlier on instead of investing in all of this equipment that I did not know how to use and utilize efficiently. I should have just went with the free stuff. So use free software. It works. Tip number 17 is to use closed caption. Now we know that, our, again, our goal is to find our audience and to make that as broad as possible. So, so the use of closed caption allows your viewers who may not be able to either um, understand your content in a different language to be able to view your content and to be able to understand your content. So utilizing closed caption is also a really great way to grow your YouTube channel more fast and effectively. Tip number 19, again, something I personally wish I would have done sooner. It would have saved me years yes years learn and study your youtube analytics yes numbers matter your youtube analytics are going to tell you so much about your youtube channel it's going to tell you what works it's going to tell you what does not work it's going to tell you some of the most simplest things that we may not even think about when it comes to creating content here on youtube it's going to tell you when people start to fall off from your channel. It's going to tell you if your YouTube intros are too long. It's going to tell you who your demographic, who is actually watching your channel. If you know who's watching your channel, if you know who your audience is, it makes it so much easier to create content for your audience, to make content for the people who are already watching. And the only way you're going to know who's watching your channel is by learning and studying your video and your channel analytics. Spend some time in your YouTube dashboard because again, a lot of the answers to your questions on why your videos aren't doing well, all of those things are gonna be found in your analytics. So if you have some time, that is where you need to be. And tip number 19, again, is something that I wish I would have known sooner, <laughs> is that you should start to utilize the 15 second rule for all of your videos. And in this video, I utilize that same 15 second rule. The 15 second rule is to make sure that whatever your video is about, you're able to express that in a way that is fast, efficient, and allows your viewer to be able to lock in to your video so that they don't click off. 
So you have 15 seconds to capture their attention, let them know what your video is about, and to gain their trust so that they can continue on with the video. That means that your video intros do not need to be a minute. They don't need to be 45 seconds. They don't need to be, oh, hey guys. Oh, I'm so sorry, I haven't made a video in two years. I just been so busy. They don't care. <laughs> they do not care about what you was doing last week. I mean, not in the beginning. They will care as your guard, as your audience starts to learn you and you know grow with you but in the beginning when you're starting a youtube channel you having those long intricate intros with all this stuff flashing across the screen and all of these graphics no one wants to see that keep your intros short and sweet and really get to the point fast so that your audience is able to lock in get the information that they need and want to come back and watch your videos and want to come back and learn more about you and you know find out where you've been you know what i mean so the 15 second rule is something that you really want to put into practice asap so that your channel can grow more fast and effective and you can get people to stay on your channel for as long as they need to be to get the information that you are trying to give to them. So that's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video of me sharing my top 19 tips, tricks, and strategies and things that I wish I would have known when I started my channel. So I hope that these 19 tips and strategies that I shared with you guys today are things that you're able to implement into your channel today so that you don't make the mistakes that I made all those years ago and with that that is it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed it if you did please let me know what tip you're able to implement in your channel today leave it in the comment section and also in the comment section let me know what tip that you wish you would have learned sooner thank you so much for watching and i will be making more videos like this very very soon so make sure you are subscribed if you have not done so already and i will see you guys in the next video